we continue our journey with the holy words of W.E.B. Du Bois and James Cone. We read now from Du Bois's book, The Souls of Black Folk. We're in chapter 2 of The Dawn of Freedom. This essay, or this portion of the book, is primarily about the Freedman's Bureau. A reading from chapter 2. The problem of the 20th century is the problem of the color line. What shall be done with Negroes? It is the aim of this essay to study the period of history from 1861 to 1872, so far as it relates to the American Negro. In effect, this tale of the dawn of freedom is an account of that government of men called the Freedmen's Bureau, one of the most singular and interesting of the attempts made by a great nation to grapple with vast problems of race and social condition. The very name of the Bureau stood for a thing in the South which for two centuries and better men had refused even to argue. That life amid freed Negroes was simply unthinkable, the maddest of experiments. Then amid all crouched the freed slave, bewildered between friend and foe. He had emerged from slavery, not the worst slavery in the world, not a slavery that made all life unbearable, rather a slavery that had here and there something of kindliness, fidelity, and happiness. But with all slavery, which so far as human aspiration and desert was concerned, classed the black man and ox together. And the Negro knew full well that, whatever their deeper convictions may have been, Southern men had fought with desperate energy to perpetuate this slavery under which the black masses, with half-articulated thought, had writhed and shivered. They welcomed freedom with a cry. They shrank from the master who still strove for their chains. They fled to the friends that had freed them, even though those friends stood ready to use them as a club for driving the recalcitrant South back into loyalty. So the cleft between the white and black South grew. Peace and blessings.